Yeah, sing along if you know it. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look at the five and ten Listening in once again With candy canes and silver lanes of gold It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas There's toys in every store But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door A pair of hop-along boots and a pistol that shoots the wish to party and then Dolls that will talk and will go for a walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look at the five and ten. Listen in once again with candy canes and silver lanes of gold. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. In every store, but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop along boots and a pistol that shoots the wish of body and then dolls that will talk and will go for a walk is the hope of Janice and Jen. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Come on, Owen, it's cold outside. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go There's a tree in the Grand Hotel One in the park as well The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Soon the bells will start And the thing that will make them ring Is the carol that you sing All right. Thank you guys so much for being here at Greystone. Merry Christmas to you guys. First Sunday of December. If you guys would do something for me, y'all just stand up and make somebody feel welcomed. Give somebody a handshake or a pound or a hug. Whatever you guys want to do, let's meet somebody new. We're gonna do a song called Praise. You guys sing along. You guys clap a little bit. If you're holding a coffee, maybe you can do this. Whatever, y'all, come on. Clap, clap. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Okay. 
breathing. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Come on, choir, sing it out. Come on. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? clap a little bit more. There's a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be grateful for. The work he's done on the cross, he's defeated the grave, he's won it all. We sing from a victory. Here we go. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, I'll praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Hey. Praise the Lord of my soul. so good this morning. Come on. We're going to sing a new song called Hope Has Come. We're going to sing it during Christmas. We want to teach this to you guys. There's hope in Christ. Every night a newborn king, hark the herald angels singing, holy, holy. Humble in a manger lay, the Godhead three in one displayed his glory, his glory. This is the chorus. to the world a hope is given he is the son of heaven behold light and life to all he brings, everlasting Prince of Peace forever and ever. Hope has come now here to dwell, 
He had been of Emmanuel, Messiah. thankful for your birth and what that means to us, this season, what this means to us. God, you are the reason for this season. So I pray as our pastor comes up, I pray that you'd preach to us, that you would teach us something brand new. Christmas revival, Lord, may we have a revival in our hearts. We love you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, man, you guys can go ahead and take a seat. Over the last few weeks, as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of Greystone Church, I've been reminded of God's incredible faithfulness to us as a church family. God truly has done immeasurably more than we could have ever asked or imagined. The annual Christmas offering is an opportunity for us to show our gratitude to God and give Him our first and our best Christmas gift. As I mentioned in my letter to you all, we are excited to rally around Pastor Jonathan's vision to purchase land and to build a church on a major highway. This endeavor is not just about constructing a physical structure, it's about creating a gathering place that will honor God and stand for the next 150 years and beyond. This vision of expansion is about establishing a place where people can find refuge, experience the transformative love of Christ, and connect with others through meaningful relationships. This is a project that will impact the lives of generations to come. Additionally, a portion of the 2023 Christmas offering will go towards essential campus improvements. In the last year alone, we were able to renovate student spaces at two of our campuses, update the lobby and auditorium at the Loganville campus, as well as paint the entire exterior of our Monroe and Oconee campuses. We were able to make so many great improvements due to your faithfulness that we will continue to be good stewards of these resources in the coming year. Our internship program has been such a success and is central to Graceton fulfilling its mission of knowing God and making God known in the communities. 
We are excited to allocate a portion of the 2023 Christmas offering to the continuation of this great program. At Greystone, we strive to invest and raise up Christian leaders that will help reach the next generation for Christ. The goal of this year's Christmas offering is $250,000. I'd like to ask you and your family to pray about it and see what God would lead you to give. Some people give $100, some people give $1,000. Some families give more than $10,000. The dollar amount is not what's important. What is important is that you can give cheerfully what God has laid on your heart to give. I want to thank you in advance for giving sacrificially and generously this Christmas season. All right, well, uh, Merry Christmas, uh, everyone. We're always super excited about the Christmas offering because it's an opportunity for us to keep Jesus Christ at the center uh, of our Christmas. It's an opportunity for us to give God our first and our best uh, Christmas gift. So I hope and pray that, uh, that you as a family will, will pray about it and see what God uh, would lead you to give. It's, it's going to be an incredible opportunity for us to, to step out in faith and trust God uh, this Christmas season. Let me welcome in our Monroe campus, our Coney campus, everybody who's listening to the podcast, everybody who's watching uh, online. Uh, today we're getting a brand new series called Christmas Revival. Now, normally when you think about Christmas time, you don't think about revival. Like Christmas and revival are, are two words that normally don't go together. And so when you think about revival, what do you think about? What, what are the things that come uh, to your mind? Now, if you grew up, if you're older like me, and you grew up in a Baptist church, we used to have revival, right? Are y'all familiar with what I'm talking about? So it would be in the evenings. It might be like Sunday night to Wednesday night. We, the church would have a, a revival, right? And we would bring in a guest speaker. We'd be bring in an evangelist from, from out of town. And he might preach with a little more fire. He might preach with a, with a little more passion than normal. So when you think about revival, what images come to your mind? Maybe, maybe like, a, like a little white church or maybe a pulpit or maybe a choir with robes, which, by the way, how good was the choir today? I love, I love it when we have a choir. Do we have a picture of the choir? I wanted to show the other campuses a picture of the choir. Do we have that? There we go. There we go. So uh, we actually have the choir in robes, and that's going to take place all of our Christmas season. You might think about a big tent Revival, right? Like, like, like revival happening. Now, as we begin this series, Christmas Revival, I don't want us to start with this, with the big corporate revival, the big, big church revival. I want us to start with us. I want us to start with a, with a personal revival. Like, I want my heart to be revived. I want your heart to be revived. I want the joy of your salvation to be restored. I want your faith to, to wake up. I want to see you on fire for God. I want to see you passionate about God. Amen. And I can't think of any better time than Christmas to have a revival. Amen. So we're going to trust God over the next several weeks that he's going to move in a way that he's never moved before. And it begins with us. It begins with our souls being revived. It begins with, with us waking up to the things of God. So Christmas is about the, the coming of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating the advent of Christ. We're celebrating the coming of Jesus Christ, the first coming, and we're longing for that second coming, right? We're looking forward to that second coming. Now, I've already began studying on, on a series I'm doing next year on, on Jesus coming. We're, we're going to talk about the rapture. We're, we're, we're going we're to talk about the end times. We're going to talk about how Israel, the, the war in Israel, and all of that is playing into everything that's going on. Looking forward to that. But before we get there, we first have a revival. So we're going to have a revival this Christmas. Now, when you think about Christmas, what are some of your favorite traditions? Like we all, we all have Christmas traditions, right? Uh, so today we're taking pictures with Santa. Like that's one of our family's traditions. I, I like growing up every year, we would take our picture with Santa. My, my parents have this classic picture. And I didn't think about putting it on the screen until this morning but there, there's this picture of me crying, right? Crying in Santa's lap. And many of our kids cried, you know, when they sat in Santa's lap, they started crying. Hopefully we won't, we won't have kids crying in Santa's lap. But if we do today, 
We'll be sure and post those next week, okay? <laughs> so if your kid cries at any of our campuses, we're going to put it on the big screen next week. Just, just to embarrass you a little bit more. No. <laughs> Pictures with uh, Santa. That, that's, a, that's a tradition. One of the traditions we have here at Greystone Church is Elf on the Shelf. I don't know if that's part of your family tradition, but Shanda Bell, the creator of Elf on the Shelf, she's one of the founding members of Greystone Church. And so, so we, we've been a part of Elf on the Shelf. And I don't know this for a fact, but if you look at the elf, I want you to see who he looks like. He looks a lot like our son, Jolin. Okay, so, so check it out, okay? Okay, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna say that he, that, that, that he was designed after Jolin, but take a look at the elf. And tell me if your elf doesn't look like Jolin, okay? Now, I got to walk in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade back in the day when the elf on the shelf had a balloon in the parade. I was the largest elf in the parade. I was like dressed like an elf in the parade. Great tradition. Some of our traditions are decorating the Christmas tree. Now, we've done something different in our house this year. Now, this is, this is a different Christmas for us. Because Jennifer's mom passed away in March, and so the holidays have been tough. And uh, so, so Jennifer said, well, we're not going to go with the old tree. She bought a brand new tree. We're not going to bring out the old ornaments because they're all sentimental. We're going like, to like new ornaments. And so, so and we didn't even put the tree in the same location in the house that we've always put it. And this is messing Jesse up. Jesse's not happy about this. She does not like change. Different tree, different ornaments, different location. Like, like we can't deal with it, Right. But I wanted to show you a picture of Jennifer's tree. This is, this is her beautiful tree that, that she's put together uh, in our house. Uh, she went out and bought all new ornaments. And then I want you to zoom in. I don't know if you can see this, but there are birds <laughs> in this tree. There are cardinals all over this tree. And so I asked Jennifer, I said, are you sticking to the Christmas budget? <laughs> and she said, what? budget are you talking about? It's like, we need to have a conversation here for buying all new ornaments. Now, some people like to decorate the house. How, how many of you guys are like Clark W. Griswold? All of our campuses, I can't see everybody at Razor. Like, like, you're like Clark W. Like, you've got lights everywhere. Like, that, that used to be me. I used to put lights everywhere, sta putting staples all over the, all over the, over the house and just, just lights everywhere. I haven't even put lights out yet. Now, I do have some bush lights I'm going to try to throw out. Uh, we're having our, our, our uh, small group Christmas parties are coming over to our house this week, so I'm hoping to get some lights out. Now, we have our own Clark W. Griswold here at the church. If you've seen the Loganville campus, it is Clark W. Griswold showed up, right? It's an incredible light show. And I would encourage uh, our Monroe campus or our Coney campus, it's worth the drive over. Okay, it's worth the drive to come over and see the light show, right? You, you put your radio station, you put your radio to a certain station, there's, there's music, there's light show. I mean, it's just over the top. And the thing I was thinking about with this is this light show was at Philip Ladner's house. Where is Philip? He's somewhere, there he is. This, real nice, Clark, real nice. Like, this was on his house. <laughs> He's been doing this uh, since he was a child. I, I would encourage the other campuses to come over and check out the light show. It's pretty amazing. I hope our Christmas services are part of your family's tradition, like celebrating, coming to Christmas Eve at Greystone Church, the candlelight service. It's part of our family tradition. My parents come in town every year. Jennifer's dad will be here. Hopefully, Matthew and Julia will be here. Hopefully, our, our family will gather together uh, for Christmas at Greystone. Um, I think food is a big part of Christmas. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the meals, uh, the cookies, the treats, eggnog. I don't know if anybody likes, I don't really like the eggnog. We got some eggnoggers. Um, I hope helping others in need at Christmas time is a part of your Christmas. Caring for the least of these. Amen. And I want to update you guys on the banquet of blessing. It's hard for me to put into words how incredible the banquet of blessings was. It was uh, phenomenal, right? It was, it was amazing where we had, well, I guess some stats here, 952 homeless people came through the doors 
of the Classic Center. So we partnered with the Pollock Family Foundation, the Classic Center. Uh, we served a meal for the homeless. Like we're talking like Thanksgiving meal, like turkey and dressing and mashed potatoes and gravy and, and all the fixings. And so they, they came in and, and people were, were pulling their suitcases. They, were, they had all their, their stuff with them. And they came in the Classic Center. We had all the students were serving the food all you can eat. They went to their tables. We had Ebenezer's, uh, Ebenezer Church Choir singing. And then all of our volunteers were going around the table like, like can, can I get you some more dressing? Can I get you some more turkey? Would you like a piece of pecan pie? Would, would, you, would you like some cheesecake? Would you, would you like a cup of coffee? Serving them. And then after they ate, they went out into the lobby. They could get a, a, a sleeping bag, a coat, a hat, backpacks, goodie bags, like it was amazing. Let, let me just share with you guys, uh, we served 952 meals. All the food that was left over was taken to the local shelters and all the supplies that weren't taken were picked up and taken by Sparrow's Nest and Downtown Ministries and given to those who weren't able to make it. So, so listen to this, this is, what we, this is what we gave to the homeless on Thanksgiving week. 1,000 sleeping bags, 1,000 jackets, 1,000 pairs of socks, 1,000 knit hats, 1,000 neck warmers, 1,000 book bags, 1,000 baby wipes, and 200 Elf on the Shelf children's books for the kids. It was just amazing, amazing, amazing. Great to be a part of. I want to show y'all a short video just to give you the, the pictures and video don't, don't do it justice, but I just wanted you to see a little bit. So here it is. What's up, everybody? David Pollack. This is the Banquet of Blessings. Excited. This is our first year doing it. Here's what we're doing. We're having a ballroom throwdown, a feast. We're inviting in a bunch of the folks in the surrounding area in need. We're going to feed them. We're going to serve them dinner. We're going to serve them drink. We're gonna have the Ebenezer Choir playing. It's gonna be outstanding. And then you come out here to this awesome area right here and you get all kinds of goodies. We'll take you through them all. incredible. So hopefully that will become a part of our annual uh, family uh, Thanksgiving Christmas uh, tradition. Uh, if you've ever given to Greystone Church, if you gave to Greystone Church this past year, you were part of the banquet of blessings because we gave $10,000 to help put on the banquet of blessing. And over the last several weeks, we've been sharing with you guys some of the ministries outside the walls of the church that we've been, we've been giving to. And hopefully that has been encouraging uh, to you. Uh, Jesus says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. And Christmas is, is, is a big part of Christmas is, is the giving. Uh, that's another family tradition I like, the giving and receiving of gifts. Uh, it's fun to, uh, to buy gifts and to give gifts and, and to receive uh, gifts. Now, how many of you guys have started your Christmas shopping? All right. How many of you guys are finished with your Christmas shopping? Okay. Yeah. So, so I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet, but Jennifer handles the bulk of the Christmas shopping, right? And I don't know if you're like me, but like every day a box uh, comes in the, in the mail from like, like Amazon. And again, I, I pulled Jennifer aside and I said, are we sticking to the, to the Christmas budget? Are, are we staying with the budget? She said, what budget are you keep talking about? But my job is to get her a gift, right? My job is to to fill her stuff. She's real big about stocking stuffers. Like, like, like at our house, you're, you're not getting an apple and walnuts in, in the stocking. You know, it's like nice gifts. <laughs> and so, and also my job is to buy my dad a gift, which I don't know if that's hard for you guys to buy your dad a gift, but that's like one of the hardest things in the world to give. My dad's 84 years old. 
and he doesn't want anything, and if he did want something, he would go out and buy it himself. And every gift I get for him, no matter how creative I am, he returns it, <laughs> right? And I know my dad's watching, my parents, my parents watch the service. And so then I'm relegated, just get him a gift card, right? I end up getting like a gift card so he can go get what, whatever he wants um, to get. So I was thinking about this message. I had this interesting fault. And, that, and this is what the message is, is based on today. It's the idea, if you could ask God for anything this Christmas, if you could ask God for one thing this Christmas, what would you ask him for? Now, now this, the, the, this, this is an exercise. This is not, not, not my theology. I don't, I don't believe that God is a genie in a bottle, that he just gives us everything we ask for. He's not a Santa Claus God, right? That we just, we just bring our wish list to him and, and he gives us what, whatever we ask for. But, it, but it's an interesting fault. If you could ask God for one thing this Christmas, what would it be? And maybe some of us would ask God a question. Like, God, 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 God why did this happen? Why would you allow this to happen? I think all of us have things in our lives when we don't know why they happen. Now, some things that happen to our lives, we look back on six months from now, one year from now, five years from now. Say, oh, I see, how the, I see why that happened. I see how, how God had a plan in that, how God was using that, and how all things work together for the good of those who love God, who've been called according to, to his purpose. But then there's some other things that happen and, and we can't quite wrap our brains around it. Like, God, God, why, why would you allow this to happen? Why, why did my loved one pass away? This year, more than any other year at Greystone Church, we've suffered so much loss, so many of us. And, and I'm, lo I'm looking at faces. So, so many of us have lost loved ones this year, a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, a wife, a husband, a son, a daughter, a sister, a brother, a niece, a nephew, a friend. And if we could ask God one thing, like, God, God why, did, why did this happen? Why, why, would, why would you allow this to happen. You might ask God, well, why did I lose my job? Or why did my loved one uh, get cancer? Or, or, or why did I go through a divorce? And so, so we might ask God, why? Or maybe for you, the answer to this question is biblical. Because there was one guy in the Bible that God came to and said, I'll give you anything you ask for. What would you want it to be? That's, that's King Solomon, right? And what did Solomon ask for? He asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for silver. He didn't, he didn't ask for gold. He didn't ask for power. He asked for wisdom. And we know that Solomon was the wisest man to ever live. And so is that the biblical answer? Should, should we ask God for Wisdom, if God would give you one gift this Christmas, what would you want it to be? Now, for many of us, it would be the answer to our number one prayer request. Do you have a number one prayer request? I, I, I have probably a top five prayer request. Every single day, I pray the same thing. Now, three of my top five prayer requests are my three kids. What I'm praying for them, them for Jennifer and I in our marriage, and I have a big prayer request I'm praying for the church. Every single day, if you're looking at my prayer journal, so the verse of the day, whatever the verse of the day is, we have the daily Bible reading plans that are coming out for Christmas revival today. I write the verse at the top, I write the date, and then I have a little quiet time based upon this passage, get some application, and then I have my prayer request. And if you were to look at the pages of my prayer journal throughout the year, the top prayer requests 
the top five, they're like the same every day. I'm, I'm like the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18. I am wearing God out. I'm wearing him out. This is, this is like the number one prayer. I'm like, like, God, I'm believing. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock on the door will be given to you. Like I'm believing God at his word. Amen. That he says he, he's a God who answers prayers. He's a God who does miracles. And so I'm coming before him every single day, wearing him out. If God would give you one thing this Christmas, what would it be? Maybe for some of you, you're praying for a husband, you're praying for a wife, maybe you're, you're single. And, and that's what you're praying for. You're, you're praying that God would, would bless you with a husband, that God, God would bless you with a wife. Or maybe that's your prayer request for your kids. You're praying for a, a godly husband, a godly wife for your child. Maybe, maybe that's what you're praying for. Maybe, maybe some of you are, are praying for uh, a new husband. <laughs> well, you're kind of tired of the current one that you have and you're looking for a newer model, right? Like, like Jennifer's been dealing with me for 29 years. 29 years ago, this day, I went to the top of Chihaw State Park and dropped to one knee and put her life savings, put my life savings on her finger. She's been putting up with me for 29 years. Of course, I'm joking. Y'all know I'm joking. But maybe you pray for a better husband or that your husband will be a better man. Or maybe you're praying for your spouse's salvation. Your husband or, or wife doesn't know Jesus and you're praying that they might come to know Jesus. Or maybe you're praying for your son or daughter's salvation. Like you don't know if they know the Lord and you believe the heaven and hell to be real and to be true and, and that God Christ to live for all eternity. And that, that's your number one prayer request. Or maybe you're praying for a prodigal child to come home this Christmas. Oh, what a Christmas that would be. That your son or daughter would come home this Christmas. Or maybe you're praying for a child. You're unable to have kids and you're trusting God to bless you with, with a child, to bless you with a pregnancy. Or you're hoping to adopt a child. Or you're praying for a grandchild to be born. Jennifer was wearing our daughter Julia at Thanksgiving, <laughs> wanting a grandchild. I'm like, chill out. I don't even want to think about how that would happen. <laughs> or maybe you're praying for the reconciliation of a loved one. You have a broken relationship with a family member, a sister, a brother, a friend. You need God to do a miracle in the relationship. If Jesus can raise Lazarus from the grave, he can restore a broken relationship. And you might have a relationship that you think is, is dead and buried and beyond saving. Jesus Christ can save it. Jesus Christ can do a miracle. If you had one request, what would it be? Maybe it's the healing of a loved one. Someone is battling cancer and you would love to see them healed or you're battling cancer or you're battling an addiction or someone you love is battling an addiction. Or maybe you just wanna pray for the good health of your aging parents. If you could ask God for one thing this Christmas, what would it be? Maybe for our students, it might be to make the baseball team or to make the softball team or to earn a football scholarship or to get accepted in the University of Georgia or if he or she's really smart, get accepted in Georgia Tech, right? Are there any Georgia fans at church today? Oh, all right, all right. I see all the Alabama fans. <laughs> They're all wearing their gear. <laughs> so where am I going with this? If you could ask God for one thing this Christmas, what would you ask him for? Like if you knew he would answer your request, what do you want it to be? 
I love what King David said in Psalm 27, 4. This blows me away. He says, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, Amen. to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. The only thing that David wanted. Now, now David is known as a man after God's own heart. And we know David's story. He wasn't a perfect man. He, he had some, some really high highs and he had some really low lows. And he, he was on the mountaintops and he was in the valleys. He was literally in the caves. And he says, the one thing I ask of God, the one thing that I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. Like the one thing that David wanted was to be with God, to have intimacy with God, to have a relationship with God, to dwell in the house of the Lord, to walk with God, to be with God, to have intimacy with God. I think about revival and I think about Christmas. And I think about Christmas revival. I want to bring us back to the starting point. I want to bring us all back to what's most important. What we should truly be seeking is to be with God, to have a relationship with God, to seek God, to gaze upon the, the beauty of God, to live with God and walk with God and be with God all the days of our lives. What would it be like to be in God's house? Have, have, you, have you ever been in a really nice house? Have you ever been in a, a beautiful house that's perfectly decorated? Maybe overlooking the ocean. There, there's a fire in the fireplace and the, and the, the table is, is, is prepared like a feast. I long for that day to be in the house of the Lord, Amen. to sit around his banquet table, to enjoy fellowship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, we worship God, not just for what he can do for us answering our request or what he's already done, but for who he is. And what he means to us, he is our God and we are his people. Thank you. We have a seat at his table. He is our heavenly father and we are his children. And he's prepared a feast for us. We have a seat at his table. We're a part of his family. the longing to be with God, to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love the story of Martha and Mary. Luke chapter 10, I'm, I'm gonna read it out of the NLT. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village. Of course, we know the village is, is Bethany, one of God's favorite places on earth. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? I don't know if any of you guys felt like that at Thanksgiving or maybe you're gonna feel like that at Christmas. <laughs> Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all of these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about and Mary has discovered it and it will, be not, it will not be taken away from her. As we move into the Christmas season, I wanna encourage you, enjoy Christmas. Enjoy all the traditions. Enjoy your time with family. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the presents. Enjoy trying to buy that special gift for that special person. Enjoy putting the lights up and the tree and, and everything else. 
But let's not lose focus on what's truly most important. The one thing that we should all be most concerned about, and that is our relationship with God. Right. I'm trusting God this Christmas for a Christmas revival. It starts with us, right? It starts with, with me. It begins with a personal revival. Right. Let's wake up from our spiritual sleep. Let's repent of our spiritual apathy. Let's turn our hearts and our minds back to God. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let's glance at our circumstances and gaze at the beauty of the Lord. Let's seek him in his temple. Let's give him our first and our best and let's make him the center of our Christmas. If you could ask God for one thing this Christmas, I hope it would be a closer relationship with him. Right. Amen? Amen. Can, can we get closer to God this Christmas? All right, let me pray for us. God, I thank you so much that you have created us to live for all eternity. God, as, as I see faces in, in our congregation today, I, I see so many people uh, who've lost loved ones this year. So, so many people who've, who I had the honor and privilege just to speak at, at their loved one's funeral. And those funerals are a reminder to us, God, that you created us to live for eternity. We weren't just created for this life. We were created to live for all eternity. And we, we, we praise you that our loved ones are in heaven. We praise you that they're with Jesus. They're, they're in your house all the days the remaining for all eternity. And we long to be reunited with them. And God, I pray if there's anyone here at our Loganville campus, anyone at Monroe, anyone at Oconee, anyone listening and watching online who doesn't know you, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. They would surrender their lives to you. Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. He paid the price for us. We don't get to heaven through being good people. We get to heaven through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us. And if that's you, just accept Christ into your life. I ask him to forgive you of your sins and give you eternal life. God, we're praying for a Christmas revival. And it begins with us, God. We want to draw closer to you. Your word promises that if we draw near to you, you'll draw near to us. We want to have that intimate relationship with you. We want you to prepare a table before us in the presence of, of our enemies. We want you to anoint our heads with oil. We want our cups to overflow. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God, we long for that intimacy with you. We long for that relationship with you. And we're longing for revival. And we pray that we would draw closer to you. We pray for our prodigal sons and daughters to come home. God, we pray that you would mend broken relationships. And we pray that our church, God, would be a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We pray it all in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, church, we're going to move into a time of response. If you go ahead and stand, and we're just going to ask him for revival tonight, or this morning. Peace like a river, wash over me. me in water as deep as the sea hide me in love your healing embrace peace like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty Worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything, all that I am is yours. Come, Holy Spirit. Break open. 
you can be seated. As Pastor Jonathan was speaking and then our choir's response, our worship team's response, Lord, send revival. It's what we're asking for. When God is at work, there's nothing he can't do. We know that. And so we're begging and asking even for the impossible. We've seen God work before and we're gonna trust that he's gonna work again. And it's gonna be super fun to do it with y'all this Christmas season. So glad you're here today. If you're a first time guest, we want to especially welcome you. Thank you for being here. We hope that you have a great time with us here at Greystone and that you continue to make Greystone um, a weekly occurrence. We would love for you to come back. I'm super excited about some of the things as Jonathan shared about giving. We've been able to do so many fun things this week and we're grateful for your giving. One of the things on Friday, I got to host the um, staff that work at the Athens Pregnancy Resource Center. They came to my house for a Christmas breakfast and Miss Rhonda Chapman led a devotion with them. And it was a wonderful thing that we got to do because of your giving, so thank you for that. And then yesterday we hosted 750 foster kids and families at Stars and Strikes in Decula. It was a ball. And um, so thank you, thank you for giving. And I'm, I'm so grateful because I get to be on the giving end of what y'all have already given. And thank you, thank you for that. Um, I wanna share a couple things. On that communication card that you received at the bottom of your talk notes, um, I would love for you to fill that out. And if you're a first time guest and you fill it out, we'll donate $5 to the Southeast Co-op in your honor. But others of you need to write something down. You have a prayer request, something you're trusting God. When Jonathan was standing here talking about the one thing, the one thing that's biggest on your heart, we wanna pray for that with you. Write that on the card. We pray um, for those. We get them on Tuesdays and we pray for those. If you would like to get the prayer request, write that on the communication card. Please add me to the prayer team and then you'll get the prayer request on Tuesdays and we get to pray over those and we get to see God doing amazing things like Greg Bailey in the back. We've been praying for his cancer and he's doing better. Praise God. There's so many things that we like to pray for and be a part of, so write those down. Some of you wanna sing in the choir, write that on the card and Josh will be in touch. Sign me up for the choir, right? We, we need more choir members. Um, maybe you need to get baptized. Maybe you wanna give your life to Christ. Maybe you wanna talk to a pastor about something. Please write that down. Um, and before we take our, our offering, because I am up here, I asked Justin, can I talk about the women's conference? He said, yes. So our women's conference is January 19th and 20th. Some of you have joined us recently and you don't know about our women's conference. It's an incredible um, two day event. We do it here. We have meals together. We do really fun things. We had a planning meeting this week and I'm excited about some of the things we're gonna do. Miss Rhonda is speaking. Um, we only have about 60 spots left. So if you're gonna sign up, do it now. I hate it when we get to like full at 350 and um, you, there's not a spot. So I don't want that to happen. So please sign up. There are these cards on the tables as you leave or you can come ask me about it. Thank you. Let me pray for our offering. Thank you so much for your giving. Dear God, we're grateful um, to get to be in your house today. God, there's so many um, things in life that bring us down, but when we can be together and worship and hear your word taught, our hearts are renewed and restored and we're grateful for that. God, I pray that you continue to provide for your people as we are a channel of blessing. God, I pray that, um, and we trust that your provision will make it into the pockets of everyone here, dear God. We know that that's what happens, that when we give you the first and best, that you open up the floodgates and we're so grateful. I pray that you would um, bless the giver today and God, that we would continue to be good stewards of your resources. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, I have, uh, as we're passing the offering buckets, I wanna let you guys know of a, important announcement, and it really affects this group of people the most. 
it affects our, our 930 uh, service. So long story short, beginning in January, we're going to do something uh, that we've never done before, okay? And I am going to be preaching live, in person, at the Monroe campus, okay? Now, how that affects the Loganville campus, we are moving this service from 930 back to 9. This is going to be earlier in the morning. Some of you are going to be excited about this because you like to get here early, okay? So this service is going to be at 9 o'clock, and then we're still going to have the 11 o'clock service. Jennifer and I will be here for both of those services. It's going to be in person, live, just like it is, okay? But I'm also going to be going, Jennifer's going to be going with me. We're going to be going to the Monroe campus at 10 o'clock, and uh, we will be in person, live at the Monroe campus at 10 o'clock. And so we've never done this before. The reason we're doing this is to grow the Monroe campus uh, and also to uh, unite our church, okay? So you guys can, can be praying about that. If anyone lives in Monroe, maybe you drive past the Monroe campus to, to come here and 10 o'clock is a better time for you, then I would encourage you to come to the Monroe campus at 10 o'clock, okay? We're, we're gonna be there uh, for that. And so we're gonna try this for 90 days. We've got January 7th through, I think, Easter's March 31st. And we're, we're just gonna try it and experiment with it and see how it goes. And so same service times next week and the next week, but Christmas Eve, this is different too, but Christmas Eve, we're having nine and 11 in the morning which would be completely different for us because we're used to having the evening services on Christmas Eve. But we're going to be 9 and 11 Christmas Eve. We're going to be off December 31st, and then we're going to be back here 9 a.m. January. Y'all got it? All right, everybody go get your picture with Santa. We'll see you next week. <laughs>